Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Exciting announcement for all of my listeners. I've officially opened my exclusive group, the Project Me Passive Income Posse, to the public. This group is by application only, so we can keep the group high vibe and spend our time, energy, and expertise only helping those of you who truly want massive success and impact. You get live weekly trainings from me, special guest coaches, and direct access to me and my business partner for all of your questions. To learn more and apply, go to projectmewithtiffany.com, click on work with me and select Project Me Posse. And of course, any questions, feel free to DM me at Project Me with Tiffany. Welcome to Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast and posse. I'm your host, Tiffany, and today you are getting a loving butt kicking from me that is long overdue. We're talking about the number one reason you are stuck. And I'm not going to just point out the reason and then not give you a way to get yourself out of it. (laughs) Isn't that the worst when people do that? It's like, well, now I discovered the why, which is what which is the why isn't really that important. I used to get stuck on why is this happening? Why do I feel that way? Why did they do that? Like, why? actually doesn't get you to the solution. It appeases your ego and it kind of tricks you into thinking like, well, if I just knew why, then I would behave differently. If I just knew why, I would figure it out. If I just knew why I was uh, being procrastinating all the time, it would make me stop. That's not true because there's a lot of things if you really think about that you, you actually do know why and it has not changed your behavior or actions one bit. So little nugget there. If you're stuck on the why, it's just giving your your brain something to chew on. And it's giving an illusion as though you're doing something. And it's a really tricky way of staying stuck. If I could just figure out this, if I could just learn how to do this, if I could just understand this more, if I could just feel more confident, if I could just have some more motivation. If I just didn't hate the sound of my voice, if I just knew how to write, if I just knew what to write about, does any of that sound familiar? (laughs) You guys are like, oh my God, she is in my head today. It's because I told myself all these things, you guys. But I hadn't, I wished I had someone saying to me, pointing this stuff out, it would have saved me tons of aggravation, time, I wouldn't have wanted to quit at least once a week. And I wouldn't have waited 10 damn years to start Project Me with Tiffany Carter. I mean, for the love of God, people, our brains are cunning and baffling. And they will come up with all sorts of things when we're scared. So one of the other things that your brain, your ego will do is it'll say you're stuck. I'm stuck. I'm not sure. And that's where the why comes in. So you're, you're having, you're in that feeling of stuck if you're in the whys, right? But, and you're thinking if I just knew why I wouldn't be stuck. You know, I'm stuck. I, I, I don't know why I'm stuck. And then you get fixated on not knowing why you're stuck. And maybe you start, you know, buying a bunch of personal development books, and maybe that'll I'll find out, you know, why, you know, why I'm stuck, and I'll release my stuckness. (laughs) Let me tell you something. I I can tell I've worked with over 1500 people in one on one coaching, okay, and well over 100,000 in group settings. I can pinpoint really quickly with people why why they're stuck. 
And it doesn't matter, even if it's a profound epiphany to them, that doesn't mean the very next day, all of a sudden they're into massive action. They just, their, their minds move to something else. You are stuck and you're stuck in the whys, number one, because you're in fear, you're in resistance, which underneath resistance is fear. When you keep peeling it back, it's fear, it's fear, it's then it's the I'm not good enough along with the fear when you just keep stripping it back and stripping it back and stripping it back. So it might look like I'm confused. That's another version of stuck, right? If I only knew what to do, that's confusion. Um, if I only knew why I was procrastinating, I don't know why I'm not doing this. You gotta, you, you've got to call bullshit on yourself. And because maybe you've not fully done that yet, I'm doing it for you today. And I'm doing it with love, as you know. You guys don't listen to me. You guys do not listen to me for me to fluff around. Okay? That sounded really dirty. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I get right to the point. I tell you what's up, what's not. I tell you what the catch is to everything because there's a catch to everything. I tell you the good, the bad, the ugly. You come to me for the real deal. And sometimes the real deal um, isn't pleasant to hear. And it can ruffle your feathers. And But you know what? Someone who really gives a shit will tell you, will, will risk you being mad at them to tell you what you need to hear, as long as you're saying it with love and compassion, right? And you're not saying it to try to hurt somebody. Um, those The people who I'm the closest to in life, we tell each other what's up. And we do it with love. And I'm. it might not feel good, but I'm so grateful they do that. That's what you do when you give a shit about somebody. And I care so much about your growth financially, emotionally, personally, physically, um, that I'm going to do that. So the truth is, is that the you being in the feeling of being stuck, that feeling, that is more familiar and comfortable for you. Likely you've been in that feeling, not for one or two weeks. You've been in it for months or years. I was in it for years. Like I said, it took 10 years for me to start Project Me with Tiffany Carter. Now, some of that is the divine, right? I started it when I was supposed to start it right? And that's that. But we I got to call myself out. All right, this shit could have been started mm, with integrity. I mean, I had to learn a lot of stuff in order to be able to show up like the like this for you guys, I wouldn't have been able to show up this way. Because remember, I had no self worth. I could have started it at least a couple years sooner. I could have for sure a solid two years, I could have started it. Not like I'm not saying, oh, I could have started it, you know, six years sooner, but a solid two, two years is a lot of time, right? But I was trapped in the, well, I need to learn how to do this. Yes, I, you know, I have all this proven experience as an entrepreneur and I understand marketing and branding and I know I'm a professional communicator and a trainer and I coach people, blah, blah, blah. But doing a personal brand is totally different. So I need to enroll in courses and I need to do da, 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 da. And so I need to figure this out. And oh my God, it seems now I have to have pictures taken. I hate having my pictures taken. Now I have to do this. And I mean, I used the whole stuck thing. Now I wasn't even aware I was using this. That's why I'm pointing it out to you. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? But that's also why you listen and you hire a coach because all of their mis- you're paying for learning all of their mistakes and from all of their wins, and you don't have to like spend years like I did figuring it out on my own. So me feeling stuck that became such a familiar feeling. It was very uncomfortable, but it was familiar. And that feeling was far less scary. That feeling of being stuck was far less scary than the terrifying fear of taking the risk and starting the damn thing. And you guys listening, some of you have already started the damn thing, but it's another level of your business or it's another arm of your business, right? Maybe it's you want to have more passive income. You want to do courses. Maybe it's writing a book. Maybe you want a podcast. Maybe it's video. Maybe you want to start a second company like I did. This applies to people all across the board. 
it doesn't matter how much you have in the bank. I had millions in the bank and I was still stuck. You get what I'm saying? I was already an entrepreneur for all these years. So I already like ripped off the entrepreneur band-aid, which is, you know, obviously been in other episodes. So it, it, I, I had fear. It was fear. It was personal brand. It was a, my image, right? I've never, my other company, yes, is, I'm the president, but it's not like, here's Tiffany Carter and I'm doing jazz hands right now. Like, hi, like me, me and more of me. That felt very um, self-absorbed and narcissistic to me. I was like, oh my God, that's a whole lot of me. Like who would want that much of me? Well, what did it come down to? It came down to my self-worth, right? My lack of self-worth. Who would want that much of me? Because because me isn't that great. I think I'm pretty okay. At that, you know, at, at a certain point, I got from hating myself to thinking I was okay to liking myself than loving myself. It's a journey. But I was like, I mean, I'm okay and to a certain point, but Jesus, who's gonna want that much of me? Right? So like I said, the being stuck, what's peeled behind it is fear and is not feeling good enough, not feeling smart enough. And that was another thing I had, right? Like, well, why would someone listen to me? Yes, I have all this experience. Yes, I have proof of concept. Um, Yes, I do know what the hell I'm doing in business. And I and I did have confidence in that. I just didn't have self-worth around me my being so to speak um but i was like but there's other people that you could listen to that went to harvard you know that have companies that are you know 500 million dollars you know there's sir richard branson why in the hell would someone listen to me and then i went down that whole path well you peel that back that is i'm not good enough so it comes down to you know, your, your fear of failing, fear of looking stupid, fear of not getting results for people, fear of putting all your time and energy and money into something and then it flopping, um, fear of, of being found out that you're really not all that great. So that feeling I had of being stuck and chewing on stuff and I, ugh, I just need to, I know I just need to do it. I need to find a way to get more confident about it. And I just need to figure out, you know, how this whole, you know, personal branding thing works. And chewing on that, that kind of stress and discomfort just was more comfortable to me than going for the damn thing. That was terrifying. This is the number one reason you're stuck is because you are in, you've been stuck for so long that it's familiar. You know that feeling And in a weird way, it keeps you, so to speak, safe because you're not taking a risk. You're you're a bird that is long overdue for leaving the damn nest. And yet you don't want to leave. You want to leave the nest, but you're you're not sure if you can fly without crashing into something. But, you know, you want to leave the nest. Then you watch all the other birds. Oh my God, this analogy is going crazy, but that's fine. Um, you, then you watch all the other birds who are flying around, having the best time doing loop de loos. And meanwhile, you're still in the damn nest. It makes you feel like shit. And that's not a good feeling. Yet, that's more of a comfortable, safe feeling to you than taking a damn risk of leaving the nest. And yeah, maybe you do fall. Maybe you do slam into a window. Maybe you do, but maybe you don't. Maybe you also fly. Maybe you're a fucking natural at it. Maybe you can do triple loop de loos and right off the bat. You don't know. You don't you don't know because you're not taking the risk of doing it. Yet you're sitting in the misery and the discomfort of watching other people doing it, watching another month go by, another year go by, and you're not going after what you know you're meant to do, what you know you want to do. You're staying at the same damn workplace that might not be so bad, but might not be so bad isn't really thriving in life, is it? Right? And it's really, it's that simple. But the most simple things are the hardest usually to do. So here's how I went from that stuck zone 
you know, stuck in that spot, you have to have like, I call it like the come to Jesus conversation with yourself. It's like, it's like goes like this, you know, so what, what's it going to be? What's it going to be, Tiff? Are you going to just keep going on another year? Believe me, I knew how many years had gone by every fucking year. I was in a self-imposed prison. I could tell you even the year and years and months were going by. I had the idea for Project Me with Tiffany Carter. The name, even sketches of the logo when I was recovering from spine surgery from my workout addiction. And yes, it's a real addiction. And for the first time in my life, I was forced to be still for that long. And you couldn't sit up. I could only lay down. And this all came to me. The premise, the purpose, I'm going to cry. The purpose, the premise, the people, it all came to me because I finally slowed the fuck down. God made me slow down for a long period of time. And it came to me and it hit me very clear. Very clear. Yet it, I wasn't like, I'm going to start this tomorrow. I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. And I kind of let it go. I That idea never left me. Never left me. I might not have thought about it every day, but it'd pop up once a week. It'd pop up once a month. And you better damn well believe it was like every year on my birthday. Because, you know, those pivotal like moments right in your life like certain birthdays or maybe it's every birthday there are these markers in your life right or maybe it's a death you know for a lot of people it's this whole covid thing and and seeing oh my god like what could happen in life something could change any day i need to get my shit together and every birthday be another birthday i'm not i'm not doing what i meant to do to serve yes i support my charities and my main, you know, nonprofit mission, which is to rescue women, teens and children from being sex trafficked, right? Yes, I'm very fulfilled in that part. But that's not that's not my um, that's not my fulfilling business that I monetize, right? I have another episode on the whole multi passionate entrepreneur thing. Some things are not meant to be monetized. This was meant to be monetized. This was supposed to be my vocation. And I was, I was, I wasn't ready. I was, I was stuck. I was in that. And finally, I mean, it was about, mm, we're getting close to three years ago now on my birthday, September 5th, by the way, Virgo vibes. Um, I was like, Tiff. What in the hell are you going to do here? It was a health crisis, too, because I got very, very sick to where I wanted to die. Um, and I was like, oh, my God. If I died or I was like so sick where I wasn't able to, you know, I'm not able to function well. <sighs> Oh my God, like life could be taken from me. Life can change in a moment. And I didn't go after this dream that's been sitting in my heart and soul. What in the fuck am I doing? What are you going to do, girl? What are you going to do? Are you going to just be willing to risk it? And maybe you'll look like an asshole. Maybe you'll lose clients from your other company, you know, your corporate clients, because they'll be like, this is frivolous. You know, to have a personal brand, you have a podcast, you know, that's not, you know, that's not professional, you know, and we don't approve of the things you're talking about and you swear and you talk about God. Okay. So let's just say all that happens, all those, all that worst case scenario happens. What's worse? Do I want li to live in purgatory where... I just keep watching every year go by and I don't follow that dream that's sitting on my heart um, just because I, of what could happen. Um, because I can tell you something, that regret is going to trump everything. That's the worst feeling. You can't go back. You can't get time back. 
we can make money back. I can teach you how to make money. You could say, well, money is not that easy for me to make. Yes, it is. I can teach you that money is very fucking easy to make. It really is. Part of why you don't you aren't making it is because you don't believe that. It's actually very fucking easy to make. But we can't get time back and we can't necessarily get certain things about our health back. Right. I mean, certain things we can, you know, if you, you know, you need to lose weight or your cholesterol, um, you know, and there's some other conditions. Right. But we can't get it back. So what are you going to do? You can't have it both ways. Like the bird in the nest, the bird can't go and and fly and frolic and do loop de loos with his friends while also remaining, so to speak, safe in the nest. You can't do it. And you guys are ho- trying to hold on to both, have your cake and eat it too. And it's not fucking possible. And I get it because I was there. I'm actually very risk adverse. It's, it's to a fault. That's why, you know, I have three coaches. One of the reasons I one is I like to luxuriate and I need to be held accountable. (laughs) Otherwise, I wouldn't get shit done. And when you're paying people a lot of money, believe me, you'll show up. So that's one. The other is I I can be really risk adverse, which is unusual for an entrepreneur. Um, So I can be too conservative with things. So I totally get wanting to feel safe but also wanting the freedom. You, you've got to let go. Are you willing to let go and look at it like an experiment? That, that's what helped me where I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a year. I know really it takes a true 18 months to flesh something out, but I'll give myself a year. I'll go all in for a year, not, not toe dipping, True all in for a year, um, even even when it's hard, even when it's scary, even when I mess up, even when it looks like it's failing, I will give it, you know, truly a year. And if there's no momentum that's going and it's not work and it's just not working and there's none of it starts feeling good and I don't find my groove, then at least I know at least I tried at least I did it and I'm not living in the land of being stuck because that's just insanity. That's, that's just insanity. It really is. So experiment, but you, you have to go all in. The toe dipping is another version of being stuck. That's like the bird in the nest. Like, well, I'll fly a little bit. I'll hover over the nest, right? I'll hover, I'll hover over it. Or maybe I'll just like, fly out like a foot and fly back, right? It's not going to work. You're not going to end up with the freedom that you want, your freedom of time, your life, your financial freedom to not have to depend on any person, job or institution for money ever again. You're not going to be able to have those things and help the people that you are meant to serve unless you let go. You have got to be willing to go into that terrifying feeling of fear, fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of being made fun of, fear of success. I have more of a fear of success than failure Um, because I have a belief that I'm still working on that in order to be wildly successful, a lot will be required of me, right? And I don't want more to be required of me because I want to luxuriate, damn it, and I want to play. And so that was part of my resistance or, you know, or some of these, you know, a lot of these beliefs we hold on to. That was some of my resistance um, because I was like, oh, my God, I don't want to go back to working those 12 hours a a day. That's what got me sick. And I don't have any interest in doing that. And I want to enjoy life. So here's a different question. How can I do it in a way that feels fun and exciting and enjoyable? You don't have to do it the way Polly the Influencer does it. You don't have to do it Tiffany Carter's way. You don't have to do it Boss Babe number 512's way or Fitness Entrepreneur number 377. You do it in your way 
as long as you go all in your way, your style, what feels good and in integrity and aligned with you. What I teach, you know, in my, you know, two month private business coaching are my emotional based sales techniques. I have proven strategy I teach you to attract ideal clients and then convert them into paying customers. I teach you the strategy, but there is a lot of gray area where we customize how you attract and convert customers. We customize it to you. There isn't just one way. I have a proven strategy and a technique that you can plug and play into many, 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 many different ways. I'll tell it's kind of like the workout, you know, when they say for working out, find a workout you enjoy because then you'll be consistent. It's the same as business. You find you find a way of generating new clients, leads, right? Generating leads and converting them into paying clients in a way that's exciting and is fun and, you know, feels good to you then you're going to be consistent about it. And that's my job to make sure we find that and to implement a plug and play system so that the damn thing actually makes you money and you don't have a jobby, right? You end up having a real business because we're not available for jobbies. But I can sit here and give you my exact methods. I can give you all of my things. But none of that matters if you're not willing to move out of that comfortable, familiar feeling of being stuck and you're willing to move into the terrifying fear of letting go and going all in. I, that's why I only take 30% of people who apply to work with me because I can only help you if you're willing to go all in. Otherwise, it's a waste of your time and it's a waste of mine. By the way, I am still taking summer applications too for my um, two-month private business coaching. I've never taken summer applications before, so there isn't going to be that much time left for me to accept applications because I'm getting really full. So you know that you want to go all in. You don't have to do it alone. You're like, okay. I had the come to Jesus talk. Tiffany talked, you know, was talking about, and I'm going to stop toe dipping and I'm going to go all in. You know that. And you want to have someone guide you and be by your side and show you, you know, how to do it the profitable way and cut out a lot of the headache and figuring it out part. Then apply for my two month private coaching. If you are, in a zone where you are toe dipping and you want to go all in, but I mean, you're really stuck and you need, you really need help. You really need help getting to that let go spot. It would be better for you to book a 90 minute session with me. And I just opened um, August time spot spots. So book a 90 minute session with me so we can, we can get you there. I'll have the direct come to Jesus talk, whether you believe in Jesus or not. <laughs> I'll have that direct talk to you and we'll, we'll help get you there. But I can't make you get anywhere, nor can anybody. And they're waiting for the right time. That's all, all bullshit that all goes with stuck. It's I need to go all in now and not let another week go by, another month go by, and I'm scrolling online, and I'm seeing all these other people who are doing it, many have done it for years. And then you start going, God, now maybe it's too late if I'd only started sooner. Now the market seems so saturated. More lies. That's more shit that comes from the stuck zone. Any market that is profitable, where there's a lot of money to be made is saturated. Look at the beauty industry. And yet, Lo and behold, there is always room for, for new beauty lines like Rihanna's Fenty line, which I'm obsessed with, right? There's a lot of celebrity makeup lines, perfumes. I mean, good Lord. It's like every celebrity has a perfume, yet they make millions and millions of dollars off it. So that's just another, another stuck lie. So are you willing to go into that terrifying feeling 
of going all in, I would suggest, say you're experimenting, say, I'm going to do it for a year. I'm going to go on all in for a year. If you say, I'll go all in for three months, you're not all in. That's a version of toe dipping. You've got at least give me a year, a year commitment. Give yourself that. Aren't you worth that? Or do you want to be, you know, a 75 year old woman who's like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't go for that. I could have done that. Do you want to keep watching these other people online, which a lot of them, you know, that you're more qualified, you, you know, you're judge, you're, you're judge Judy on that shit. You're more qualified. You have more experience. Um, you're more authentic. You're more relatable. You want to keep watching Polly, the influencers cashing in doing their thing. Well, Polly, the influencer went all in. So. While you're sitting there in the damn nest, what's it going to be? Share this episode. Take a screenshot. I want you to share this on social media. Share it in your Instagram stories and tag me at Project Me with Tiffany so I know you listen to this episode. There is guaranteed at least one person in your audience, even if you only have 73 followers, that needs to hear this episode. This could be the catalyst for them actually going for it. So be of service, take a screenshot, share it in your Instagram stories, tag me at Project Me with Tiffany, and I will also be resharing um, your posts as well. And let's spread the word on this. You never know. If this really resonated with you, for sure it's going to resonate with someone else. Pay it forward. Wishing you guys great health, wealth, and worth as always. Love you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.